Hey, what's up guys? My name is Matt. Today, I want to talk about if common projects are worth $420. Let's get into the video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Matt and I make a ton of videos like this. And today, I really wanted to look at the common projects at Keeley's Low and kind of look at it in kind of retrospect of a bunch of other different shoes around the price range. I feel like when people look at common projects a lot, they love to compare them to like the Kurt McNeely's or the Koyos, but in reality, I really wanted to look at it isolated by itself and also with shoes around that similar price range that in my opinion might be better quality, might not. Because at the end of the day, the Common Projects at Keeley's is really like a shoe on its own and it built this category of really low sleek sneakers. Now the one that I have personally is the black with the white sole. I'd say the most popular colorway of this would be the white with the white. And the white on white is popular for a good reason. It really is a quintessential all white leather sneaker. Jumping into this shoe in particular, this features an all leather upper from back to front. There is no suede hits at all except for the heel right here. There's a bit of like this like nappy suede a little bit probably just so your foot is a little bit more controlled in the shoe feel that with sometimes with leather that your foot might be able to slip out a little bit this will prevent heel slippage in my opinion the laces are just a normal canvas lace they're not like a saint laurent where it's like a wax lace this is just a plain canvas lace and if i'm being honest there's not really too much more to say about the shoe pretty much is like a black white sole so if we're looking at this shoe in particular it has a 1658-457547, which I believe is style code, size, and then color. I could have the style and the color code mixed up, but I believe that's what it is. It's just 1658 is the style, 45, which is my shoe size in common projects, and then 7547, which would be the color, which is in this particular is black, white sole. Now other things about the shoe that make it a little bit more special than some of the other shoes on the market. I guess one of them is that it is made in Italy. Besides the gold lettering on the sides, that's pretty much the draw to the shoe is it's using extremely high quality leather. It's using a Margum outsole, which is one of the highest quality soles that you can put on a shoe. It is stitched all the way around, hand stitched, which on a lot of cheaper shoes, it's actually glued with like this fake stitching right here. A good way to tell on your pair if it's using a fake stitch or a real stitch is honestly just go in your shoe and you should just look to see if there's stitching in there. If you can see stitching on the inside, it usually means that you have a little bit more high quality pair versus something that's cheaper, that's gonna be glued on, just not gonna be as durable. You know, that's where they cheaped out a little bit and instead of actually sewing the sole into the leather and make it last a little bit longer, they decided to glue it. You know, it's fine, it depends on the price you're paying. One interesting touch to the shoe that I don't think it's talked about a lot is actually the tongue on the sneaker. The tongue on the sneaker actually is slightly padded, but not padded padded like a Jordan would be. It just has like a slightly, slightly, a little bit more like foam right here. And there is actually a stitch that separates kind of like the regular leather with no padding to this leather with like a little bit of padding, not much just ever so slight, which in my opinion really helps give it the look when you put it on, of kind of like the tongue sticking out a bit more. It kind of, I believe, just helps it out a little bit more than some of the other shoes that might not have it. Another thing about this shoe that I know the Kurt McNeely's don't really have as much is it does feature a leather insole in there. It does say Common Projects Made in Italy on there, but I tend to find that leather insoles really form your foot a little bit more and become more comfortable as time goes on. Whereas I believe the cheaper ones were just kind of like cloth and you know it'll be more comfortable short term but i believe in the long term having leather insoles really form your foot really make your shoe your shoe and especially if you're going to be buying something like the common projects where they get better with age they're going to look better um, they're going to last a long time i definitely think it's worth the investment for something with a leather insole inside of it rather than a cloth insole i could be wrong about the cheaper one with that honestly but just from when i was touching it on my friend's pair Kind of what I saw personally with that. And honestly, without going into too, too much details on every little bit of, oh, this is natural leather and it has this and has that. Really, are the Common Projects Achilles worth $420 plus whatever tax you have? In my opinion, no. If I'm being honest, when I was shopping for this shoe in particular, the one shoe at Nordstrom that actually stood out to me the most was the Goodman brand like kind of rip off of it. It did have a little bit more branding on it of the Goodman brand on it, 
But honestly, like, if you put this shoe and the Goodman brand, like, right next to each other, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference if I was blindfolded. Really, the only differences on it were just kind of branding on it. So I believe the Goodman brand had branding on the back and on the tongue. Um, whereas Common Projects, the only branding on it is on the side of the shoe. Both of them use Margum outsoles. Both of them are made in Italy. Both of them use, I think, similar qualities of leather, except one's $200 less. Now, if the numbers are that important to you, which they were to me in this case in particular, by all means, go for it. If I wasn't pl already planning on wearing these as my wedding shoes, I honestly wouldn't have bought them. These are, in my opinion, not worth the $420 price point. A lot of people tell you different things about the shoe. A lot of people tell you they are worth it and that they get way better with age. And there's some pairs that do last that long and other pairs you look at them and they don't look that great. Like mind you, they could just be isolated pairs with either one. But even comparing something like my Omni sneaker to the Common Projects, honestly, like I love the Omni sneakers overall. And for me personally, I feel like, I mean, just the price I paid for these was a steal and under $100. Retail, they go for around the same price. And for me personally, something with like Ami's, really good quality. I love the fact that they are a little bit different than other shoes you'll see on the market. And even comparing these to like an SL2, you can kind of see they both have a similar silhouette, but this is a little bit more branding on it. I also got these for cheaper than I got these. And you know, like I wouldn't say like Saint Laurent SL2s are the best quality possible, but definitely for the price you're getting what you paid for, you're getting a little bit of branding here, you're getting the look of it, you're getting kind of like that Saint Laurent aesthetic. Common projects, I really do feel that they do fit a particular aesthetic. They definitely fit someone who just wants a very nice, clean shoe. But just in my opinion, it's not really worth $420. When you could buy a Goodman brand shoe for $200, it looks the same. I don't think the Koyo one really looks the same. I know some people will say they do. I don't think that they look the same. I think the Goodman brand is probably the best alternative to this shoe right now. Feeling all these shoes and feeling like a Saint Laurent, feeling an Ami, feeling a Common Projects now. I definitely think the Goodman brand shoe is worth the price. And in me and my other friend's opinion, it's better than Great Switchable. I want to say it's as good as Common Projects. They're not. Greats are not as good as Common Projects, in my opinion. They're bulkier. They have a different toe box. Completely different, whereas I feel like the Goodman brand was definitely something that is more resemblant of a Common Projects, just without the branding. I'd say the price that you should be paying for these is probably closer to $250. I feel like that's where kind of like the sweet spot is. $250, $300. I think is a good price to pay for these. If you can buy them for around that price, which you could probably find them if you waited for them on sale. Honestly, not that bad of a price. Anything over that, and I feel like you're mainly just paying for the brand, and that's my personal opinion on them. I actually love these shoes. Me saying all of this, I've worn these arguably the most the past two weeks, and the first time you wear them, not that comfy. Next time you wear them, a little bit comfier. Just not worth the price. If you're looking to buy these, I try these on a store. Make sure you're not wearing thick socks. When I tried them on the first time, I was wearing thick socks and the size 45 didn't really fit me right and I thought the 46 would fit me better. But then when I went in there with more of my normal socks that are a little bit thinner, I found that the actual 45 is better than a 46, which in my true to size is a size 46, but in common projects, you definitely want to size down one. So if you're 46, go for 45, 45 to 44. Definitely try them in store if you can. I know they're in more Nordstrom's and that's where I bought my pair was Nordstrom. Let me know what you guys think of common projects down below in the comment section. I kind of want to hear you guys' opinions. Where do you guys think the sweet spot price is for common projects? If you guys are new here, please subscribe down below. It really helps a small YouTuber like myself. And like I end every single video here, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.